company. I'm joined by Theo Usherwood, political commentator. We're going through this morning's papers. Now, the front page of the Daily Mail this morning, Labour opens the door to giving asylum to 70,000 people. Theo, people will be spluttering on their cornflakes this morning. Right, let me explain this. So, when Rishi Sunak was Prime Minister with Suella Bravham, they had an illegal migration bill and they brought it forward, it became law. And then one of the most contentious bits, the, what, uh, up it, for the lawyers mm. on the left, they got so angry about it, was that they made a rule that if you travel to the UK by a small boat, you do not have any application. You cannot make any application for asylum in this country. Flat no. It was, the, uh, it was, it was just a, a blanket policy that if you arrived on a small boat, you weren't going to be able to mm. make an asylum application. What Welcome by many of our Talk TV viewers and listeners, by the way. Yes. Labour's going to overturn that. So they're just going to take that bit out of the legislation, and they've got the, they've got the huge majority, so they can do it. So it's, it, it, mm. they're going to pass that. Now, what that means, and these are numbers from the Refugee Council, OK? What they've estimated is that at the moment, if you have an application for asylum, you have, a, in effect, a 62% pass rate. That's that's what it stands at out on average, which that's is just, higher than the rest of Europe, as far as I understand. It is it is mm. it is high. So what they've done is they've calculated that at the moment there's a backlog of around 120,000 mm. in this country who've come here on small boats who are waiting to have their applications heard. They can't make applications for asylum because they've arrived here on small boats, and the legislation says that they can't. By overturning it, they're going to now be able to make yep. those applications. If you go to the pass rate, then you end up with 70,000 being granted the right to stay in this country. Now, many other people are saying, or the Conservatives are certainly saying, it will be higher, it will be about 90,000. I mean, there'll be people around the country saying, what on earth are we doing allowing this number of people to settle in this country? And I think it will be very contentious, this. Yes, it will be contentious. And of course, will the message then travel to the uh, criminal gangs that are trading on by offering tickets, making huge amounts of money, £2,500 per person, to bring them across the channel, because they can now say to those individuals, actually, you won't just be stuck in a hotel, unable to work, unable to have any life whatsoever. You will be able to make an application for asylum and potentially get a job and the right to settle in the UK eventually. So it is hugely contentious, but... Mm. It will, you know, the argument that Yvette Cooper is saying, well, it's not an amnesty, it looks very much like an amnesty, it quacks <laughs> like an amnesty, it walks like an amnesty, it's so an amnesty. So it is an amnesty. <laughs> also, by the way, the official figures show that 2,258 migrants have arrived since Labour took power, so it's hardly that they've got control of the borders. Let's move on and talk about uh, the Tories, because in a complete state here, now the Conservative MPs have drawn up plans for a long leadership contest. The final four candidates will take to the stage at the party conference... And then the 1922 committee of backbench Tory MPs are then going to start this contest to basically whittle them down. Then it will go to two. Yeah. <sighs> Is this the right thing? So there's a, an, another bit to this which I revealed uh, exclusively last night, and that is that they've got a Corbyn clause. And if you remember back in 2015, the Labour Party opened up. They said, we're a democratic party. We're going to open up uh, right. voting for our leader... Uh, so to, to general members of the public. You just have to sign up to be a Labour Party mm. member and then you can choose your next leader. And, of course, what happened is that loads of entries flooded into the party and all voted for Jeremy Cor Corbyn, who won in a landslide. The Tories, with their new rules, have done something similar. So if you, over the next... You've got until 7 o'clock tomorrow evening, if yeah. you want to have a vote in this election, if you want to choose the next Tory leader... Sign up now. Sign up now. I think the entry to be a Conservative Party member is about £39. But, of course, there are those... David, there are those, David, who would quite like there to be, uh, mentioning no names, <coughs> Nigel Farage, Richard Tice, who would quite like there to be a centrist, one-nation Tory leader. What are you saying? Because then what happens <laughs> is there is a split in the Conservative Party where suddenly people like... Well, like Swell there isn't Brown, already. Like there isn't already, but you get to exacerbate the split within the Conservative Party where you end up with somebody like, say, I don't know, Tom Tugendhat as the leader yeah, of yeah, the yeah. Conservative Party, and then 
you end up with MPs, Conservative right-wing MPs, much closer, much more closely aligned to the Reform Party, saying, we can't have Tom Tugendhat as our leader, we're going to join Reform. It might not happen, but it might just. It might just, and of course Nigel Farage, who you mentioned there, front page of the Daily Express, more Tory MPs will soon defect, uh, if you can see that, will soon defect to Reform. Now, uh, this is quite interesting, because obviously I have to uh, tell you that I am involved, obviously. Uh, the Reform UK uh, leader is making... Uh, open bids to yes. people like Suella Braverman obviously yeah. uh, saying that you would be welcome I'm not sure he is actually saying you would be welcome but basically he's sort of um, dangling that carrot isn't he what is fascinating and, and, and a lot of the kickback to reform has been well you're not a professional party because you were set up as a limited company all yeah, this nonsense yeah, yeah. now that was done to expedite the process at the time and I know because I was there um, now he Nigel has said we will professionalize the party and look when you get four million votes and you get five members of parliament, mm. the, the party is in a very different place to the party it was even four months ago, three months yeah. ago. Look, proportional representation isn't going to happen. No. But, there's no, make no mistake, being in the House of Commons, it's a team game. And the more MPs you have, the more you're able to do in terms of putting pressure on the government, putting pressure on colleagues in opposition. With five MPs, Nigel Farage exceed, and Richard Tice exceeded uh, their expectations. You would and think. others. And others. <laughs> but, uh, but, but if they can get their numbers up to, say, 10, 15, with a few defections, timely defections over the autumn during the conference season, then suddenly the dynamic in the House of Commons on the opposition benches starts to change and power would seep away from, or what power is left would seep mm. away from the Conservatives and, and head towards reform. And it would make it much more likely that when the time comes for some sort of alliance or coalition, Nigel Farage and Richard Tice uh, and, uh, and the other, his other colleagues are in a much, much stronger position. Mm. Uh, now, a brilliant story, and I did give this morning. This is about Microsoft and obviously we've seen this massive IT outage as well. Now this brought warmth to my soul. Microsoft is blaming the EU for the IT meltdown. It's to do with the kernel. I, it's I'm to not, do with the kernel. I'm not an IT. I'm That's not spelled K-E-R-N-E-L, -E not C-O-L. And, and, -E and Microsoft apparently warned the EU in a, and it's a, it's, it's a glitch in the system and they needed to provide software right. to override it. And, and the EU didn't listen. They didn't listen. So, they said, so, so, so yes. and, and, and Apple, Apple managed to, uh, and other companies managed to uh, provide a way around it, but they wouldn't listen to my. So, so essentially, the EU said, right, you've got far too much dominance in the market, yeah. and therefore you have to be essentially. They had to grant access to the kernel, which is yeah. the, ins the the bit in the middle, essentially, to the operating systems. Apple refused, yeah. as you rightly say, and of course Microsoft went with it because the EU made them because they're a bunch of bullies. Uh, some might say. Some might say that, but actually I, I just enjoyed the headline this morning. Also, let's just talk about porridge. Yes. This is a brilliant story in The Telegraph. Uh, page three, I am a massive advocate of porridge and I eat it every single day, including in the summer. Yes, Who else is eating porridge? My wife eats porridge. She's Apart from bucket, you, your bu wife and me. Bucketfuls of, <laughs> bucket of porridge. It sets, you up, you know, it sets you up for the day, Does. apparently. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not such a, a fan. Uh, apparently the Chinese... Uh, How can you not be a fan of porridge? It's just a bit stodgy, isn't it? No, you it's just, fantastic. You can't sort of run also around. Also low GI, uh, slow release. Slow release. Slow release. Slow release. Oh, don't, don't, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Really? Yeah. I think I prefer sticky rice like the Chinese. Anyway, who's I'm eating porridge? Thing. We are. <laughs> our, 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 our British uh, Olympic athletes are ah, eating porridge. Ah, yes. Um, of course, they're eating porridge um, because they want to, of course, get the best results and secure loads of gold medals in the Paris Olympic Games and stick it to the French. But, but, <laughs> but there's a brilliant story around this, which is that the French are trying to bring in Michelin star <laughs> chefs, yes, aren't they? Yeah. But actually, the countries have reverted yeah. to type. They're all the different countries are having their, what they like. Really. Yes, and, and you, I think people like what they know, don't they? Yeah, and they especially do. if you're going if you're going abroad, if you're um, in a in a country trying to do something as, as um, amazing as win a gold medal or you know reach the very top of your game in uh, athletics or swimming or whatever you want to have you want to stick to your routine exactly. and and rather than have because in in Europe you know you have what glasses of orange juice for breakfast and crust and, and it just would be a bit different it's not the so same. not the same as a bottle. No. maybe I'd even prefer porridge for than a crust but um but yeah, that's 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 <laughs> well, <laughs> that's how it works. Well, it is how it works. Apparently, the Koreans have asked for sticky rice for the Chinese delegation, skewers for the Japanese. Apparently, also other uh, the beach volleyball and uh, taekwondo teams have requested cold meat sandwiches and salads, but the rowing teams need hot buffets.
Yes, I, I don't know. I don't know what I don't. I, I'm not a nutritionist, so I don't know what the difference is. If you're a rower, maybe you're burning more calories, but you need, you know, a really hearty <laughs> buffet um, throughout the day to keep you going. And that if you're into taekwondo or beach volleyball, then you need to sort of be. <laughs> Keep, keep the keep you well, don't need uh, so many carbohydrates. Well, also, my favorite line is that McDonald's actually lost their sponsorship deal. And Usain Bolt famously said that his success was down to eating 100 chicken McNuggets every single day, which is quite a feat in itself, I think. Theo, thank you very much indeed uh, for this morning. Really good to see you.